What's up guys, Mikkel here, and the crypto crackdown is in full effect. In this video, I want to go over some breaking new news that we just got around Circle, as well as some inside information on how bad this crypto crackdown is going to get. This is something you are going to need to see. I also want to talk about how Ripple might be in the best position out of any other cryptocurrency company out there. When the Ripple SEC case first dropped, a lot of XRP holders thought it was doom and gloom and XRP was going to be held back while the rest of the market took off. I want to show you why that might not be the case and how the opposite could be playing out right now. Last of all, at the end of the video, I want to show you some extremely bullish macro news we got earlier today. This is one of the most bullish things I have seen in a while and something that everyone is going to need to see. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. If you want to see more videos just like this, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below and turn on bell notifications. These three simple things are going to go such a long way in helping this channel grow and it really does mean so much to me. If you guys ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange Uphold down in the description of this video. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you enjoy the content. So I want to start out this video and go over some massive drama in the cryptocurrency community right now and that came about because the SEC just ordered Circle to stop selling unregistered securities which is the USDC token. Now, when I first saw this report, I was very skeptical of it because from what I understand, Circle has some very close ties to the U.S. government. And from what I have heard, it didn't seem like Circle was going to be an SEC target. Another reason why it didn't really make any sense to me was the SEC just initiated a lawsuit against Paxos. Because the SEC is already going after Paxos, which is another stablecoin provider, it didn't really make sense for me that the SEC would go after another stablecoin provider. That's because the SEC really only has to claim that one stablecoin provider is issuing illegal securities in order for the SEC to come after every single stablecoin provider and say, okay, because Paxos is issuing illegal securities, which is their Paxos dollar pegged stablecoin, Circle is also violating the law. Well, what do we know almost immediately after this report came out, we had a representative of Circle come out and say, Circle has not received a Wells notice. Well, interestingly enough, the person who actually broke the news that Circle was getting sued by the SEC was no other than Eleanor Terrett. Now, she has been extremely accurate to date, and it seems like she has some very reliable sources on the inside of the government. But almost immediately after breaking this news, Eleanor Tarrant actually had her account suspended, leading to some serious questions on whether or not Circle is actually being investigated. Now, I think it's safe to say that in terms of a lawsuit being right around the corner, if someone from Circle actually came out and said we have not received a Wells notice, well, that should at least tell us that they aren't being investigated or there's no imminent chance that the SEC will sue them. But I still think this is something we're going to be paying very close attention to because there is no question that Eleanor Tarrant obviously picked up on something, which is why she reported on the issue. Now, what could have happened, and it's easy to speculate here, we're probably not going to know the exact details, but what could have happened is the SEC could have had an ongoing investigation into Circle that they were never actually going to turn into a specific lawsuit. Eleanor Tarrant could have picked up on the investigation and assumed that the SEC was going to drop something big. Now, we're going to have to wait and see exactly how this plays out, but like I said in another video earlier this week, we really need to be paying very close attention to Thursdays because that is the date of the SEC's sunshine meetings, which is where the SEC votes on whether or not they're going to take an enforcement action. Right now, I think it's safe to say that Circle might be safe in the short term because it looks like members of Circle are at least denying the fact that there's going to be any imminent action. But this is definitely something we need to be paying very close attention to and something I thought was pretty interesting was Tony from Thinking Crypto actually tweeted out earlier today that he spoke with a source that can't be named but they're currently inside our government and right now we are watching a full on crypto crackdown from the top. Directly from Biden, he is telling the SEC and CFTC to crack down on crypto hard. 
For what Tony from Thinking Crypto is saying here is he believes Gary Gensler is really leading the charge because he wants to be known as the person who brought cryptocurrencies into compliance. Now, this sounds exactly like what Gary Gensler did when he was at the CFTC after the 2008 financial crisis when he brought those markets into compliance. So I'm not surprised at all that Gary Gensler and the SEC are trying to lead the charge here. Now, Tony from Thinking Crypto went on to say that the only way this regulation by enforcement motto by the SEC can be stopped is if people in Congress finally step up and put some limits on the SEC's power. Right now, the SEC is able to go after whoever they want in the cryptocurrency industry because there are no clear rules. The SEC is using this lack of clarity to attack anyone they can. They are saying their interpretation of the laws right now is the fact that all these companies are violating securities laws. Whether or not these companies actually are is completely ambiguous. No one knows. But the SEC is using this ambiguity to say, from our perspective, these people are violating the law and therefore we're going to sue them. The SEC is not going to provide any clarity because the second they provide clarity, all of these companies come into compliance. We saw multiple cryptocurrency firms come out and say earlier today, there is no way to register with the SEC, no matter what Gary Gensler is telling us. So until we have Congress step up and actually do something about the SEC's regulation by enforcement, there is no doubt in my mind that this behavior is going to continue. And this is exactly what Tony is being told by insiders in our government. Now, luckily, it does look like in the short term, Circle is going to be safe. But like I said, if Paxos is already getting sued by the SEC, a Circle lawsuit might have just not been worth it for the SEC. If the SEC wins on Paxos, they're likely just going to say anything that happens to Paxos also applies to Circle. And that might be why Eleanor Terrett picked up on an investigation into Circle, but now Circle is denying the fact that there's any lawsuit. The SEC is going to try to attack as few players as possible to bring the entire industry into compliance. And I think that is exactly what we're watching play out right now. Now, I want to move on and quickly talk about why this is actually very good for Ripple. There's not a lot of positives we can take out from any of this, but it looks like Ripple actually has a two-year head start on the entire industry. Now, it looked like for a while, Ripple was going to be held back by the SEC, but Ripple might have actually gotten a massive boost. And I want to read you what Jesse Hines had to say about this, because I really do think he is spot on here. And this is a narrative I have been pushing for a while. He said there are positives and negatives in everything. Take, for example, this recent SEC assault on crypto. Negative, all of it. Positive, Ripple has a three-year head start on everyone else towards a resolution. Even XRP haters are going to start hoping and praying that Ripple wins. The destiny of many of these actions will lie in Ripple's defense. If there is one company in this space that I would want to have the first shot at making case law, it's Ripple. And Jesse is exactly right here. Not only is Ripple going to be leading the entire industry, and the entire industry is going to be forced to have a completely different perspective of Ripple the company, but the fact of the matter is, the SEC is proving right now that they're not just going after Ripple. They don't just hate XRP. They are going after every single cryptocurrency company, and because of that, the fact that Ripple was the first one they went after is just giving Ripple a head start. The rest of the industry is going to have to face the SEC. It wasn't just Ripple. But Ripple has a massive advantage in the fact that they're three years ahead. They are on the trail end of their case, and we should be expecting a decision in that case almost any month now. It could be as early as the end of March, just like James K. Filan predicted. So the good news for us XRP holders is the rest of the industry is just starting to experience what we experienced three years ago. We knew the SEC was going to go after all of crypto. We knew the SEC was going to be trying to shut down as many projects as they could. But unfortunately for the rest of the cryptocurrency industry, they just assumed it was a ripple problem. They said, no, that's just XRP. The SEC is fine with the rest of crypto. 
What we can see now is those people were always wrong. And the good news for XRP holders is that we are winning against the SEC. John Deaton has already essentially proved to the court that XRP in the secondary markets cannot be a security, and Ripple has been dominating the SEC in proving that XRP itself is not an investment contract, and things honestly could not look better from our perspectives. Yes, it hasn't been perfect, and yes, there's always a chance Ripple might split the baby with the SEC, they might not win outright, but this is really the best scenario we could have asked for when it comes to getting sued by the SEC. When this case first started, I thought it was going to be 50-50. I didn't think there was any way Ripple was going to be so dominant up until the point we're at right now. The good news is though, and Brad Garlinghouse has been saying this since day one, Ripple has always been on the right side of the law. They have always been three steps ahead. And honestly, based on Ripple's arguments against the SEC, it seems like they have been preparing for this case since day one, and they have been doing an awesome job. I want to finish this video off and just go over a very interesting macro event that took place earlier today that is extremely bullish for the entire market. Earlier today, we got bad inflation data, and this should have made the market tank. Assets should have fallen off a cliff. But what happened? Almost all stocks went up, and cryptocurrencies are now moving up too. What this shows is that the idea of inflation bringing down the market isn't even enough to bring stuff down anymore. For a while, every single time we got a bad inflation read, we saw markets fall off a cliff. But now it's almost like no matter how bad the news is, markets go up. In my opinion, this is a sign that we already reached a bottom. This reminds me of what happened when we came out of COVID. Even though the COVID numbers were still getting bad, even though lockdowns were still going on, the market was going up and recovering. The worst of the news was already priced in and people who were praying for the market to do one last dip were caught off sides. I think that's exactly what's happening right now and I think today getting bad inflation data and still having the market rally was a excellent sign of that. Anyway guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much and for now, pickle out. <laughs>